One time we had issues with them going to the market. You want to buy one thing or the other. You know, you have to go to the market to get it all. Then suddenly out of the blue, some set of human beings came up and said, just go online, type in one or two things and say, I want, and they'll we'll bring it to your house. And ah, and guess what? It took a few weeks, a few months, and all the Nigerians are just rushing there and, and several shops have come on online. But one of those group of people is marking four years in a few days time we've just had before now we're having a conversation how is it that we're not getting a, our own share of the cake, of the birthday cake. And, and all that and oh, we're told no. we have to wait anyway we're talking about jumia at four and um, the chief executive officer of jumia juliet anama is in the studio thank you for joining us thank you very much thank She's you for having she. me <laughs> thank you once again thanks so four years yep in nigeria mm -hmm. If we take a look back, what, um, what would you say have been the major stepping stones for, for you? For Jumia. Um, I think the first thing I should say is a big thank you to Nigerians who shop on Jumia and have been our customers for the past uh, four years. And um, it's, it's been a phenomenal story for, for Jumia starting. And it, we couldn't have done it without our customers. So I think it's, it's just fitting to, you know, first of all, say thank you and appreciate our customers who've been there with us. Um, there are many stepping stones, um, but I think I'll just touch on the critical ones, so to speak. And you alluded to the first one, which is, first of all, we had to, we were all shopping offline, as we say. Um, you would go to a shop, you would buy um, what you want, you see what you want to buy to start with. Uh, you would pick it up, you would, you know, shake it up or whatever, and just to make sure that's pre precisely as you want it. Uh, you're also physically present to pay for it, okay? So the level of trust that is demanded of you is not that much, okay? It's zero. It's literally zero, <laughs> yes. But the, so the first stepping stone for e-commerce and for Jumia is building the trust that I can go online, click on something, I want to buy it. I haven't actually seen it, but I've just seen the picture. And I can trust that when I click buy, it's actually available. It's not out I'm, of stock. I want to ask you to hold on one second. Yes. Let me tell Alera a story. It's something that we're going to do online. Alera, <laughs> when we finish this show, we'll go online mm -hmm. and see whether we can get our share of the cake. <laughs> do we agree? Yes. I'm, I'm sure she heard you. I heard. You heard. <laughs> okay. And we shall. <laughs> online. <laughs> online. Or offline. We can order, but then it'll be delivered offline, right? <laughs> Okay. okay. Uh, so yes, you're, you're the customer base Nigerians yeah. buying Nigeria buying Nigerians buying into the mm -hmm. idea. Yes, yes. But would you say in the four years you've been effective? I would say in the four years we've made significant progress. After um, all, you went from three employees to ex a thousand. Exactly, we went from three, literally from a few employees to the number of hundreds of employees that we have today. That's one. But more importantly is the fact that we. We came from an environment where people didn't trust that it was possible to order something online and it would actually come. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, I think the very first uh, generations of e-commerce that came were not particularly quite as they should have been mm -hmm. in terms of that mm -hmm. trustworthiness. Mm -hmm. So that was the first stepping stone that, look, you can order, it, the process works. I think we've made a lot of progress in terms of being able to prove that it works. So that, for me, I think that's the first stepping stone. And of yeah. course, um, this was all helped along by changes in the banking Changing so payments. So of course, of course, over this period also, the cashless platforms. economy was also part of the key focus of the government. So banks were also going into pay, you know, payment uh, platforms. There were mm -hmm. online payment platforms. But interestingly also, you still find out, despite all of that, predominantly Nigerians still shop with a payment on delivery. Mm. So that was so we then had to adapt also to make sure that we had that option for Nigerians that when you when you come in when you order mm -hmm. you have multiple options payment options you can order and then pay on delivery or you can prepay using the online payment channels and so but on from and your so forth. experience yeah. uh, which is the one that Nigerians use the most it's a 60 40 or probably closer to 70 30 I would say people do more of payment mm -hmm. on delivery and then prepay also. Yeah. But something I want okay. to add on that, and, and the reason for that is predominantly that, that Nigerians are a bit more wary of paying online, not that they don't want to prepay, 
Okay. 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 So okay. when you, so we're also working on opportunities how we can enhance uh, our payment solutions along that line to make mm -hmm. sure that you have other options whether you can either pay with a POS or you prepay with a POS. Uh, you know, you can have other means of payment that don't require you to pay online because mm -hmm. people are a bit concerned about mm -hmm. their, you know, their, the details of their credit card and all of that being shown online and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the, the downturn in the, or yeah. the seeming downturn in the yeah. nation's economy uh, will definitely have, have had some impact on your business. It has, but uh, my response to that is, is um, Every other industry in Nigeria has had to, um, you know, has had to deal with the same kind of economic downturn. And from that perspective, what, what do you do? You just, what I say, we, we tap into that quintessentially Nigerian uh, uh, trait, which is resilience. Okay, so we, Nigerians are very resilient. Nigerians are able. We have an indomitable spirit. And for us also, is also the fact that we've used the opportunity to sort of say to ourselves, let's take a step back, relook our business model, see what works, what is important, what is too complex that, you know, it doesn't make sense for us and we can, you know, you know, sort of do away with it. And what are the things that we've done for the past three, four years that are no longer adding value to us? So like someone says, don't waste a good crisis. So that's the way we see it. Don't waste a good crisis. Use the opportunity. Look at how we can do things a lot better so that we are better positioned to serve Nigerians and we're also better positioned when the economy does turn around because it will turn around. We're much stronger than we were where mm -hmm. we started. Yeah. Now back to payments. You spoke about um, payment on delivery. Yes. How do people pay on delivery? Do they pay cash? People pay on delivery with uh, different models. So either they pay cash or mm -hmm. they pay with their POS. So, uh, so our delivery guys actually go out with both. They are able to collect cash mm -hmm. and at the same time they have a POS, you know, the uh, the machine mm -hmm. for and payment as well. You've yeah. had no issues with your staff collecting cash? To a large extent, no. Uh, but of course, as, as any business that has to handle cash, you have to have insurance. So yeah. you have to make sure that you're, you have insurance and, and, and okay. that's available mm -hmm. also.